Hey guys, my name is Ismos and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today we are doing this kind of pavement I don't know how to call it, but uh, yeah, basically this is exactly what we're doing uh, Yeah, I, I did this kind of tutorial, but uh, last time I think the pavements, all these blocks were just falling in into the ground uh, The ground was collapsing and uh, this time I just wanted to make something like uh, what you would see uh, I don't know what movie it was, Tremors, a uh, tremor going under uh, maybe a street or something so you would maybe a snake or something going under and uh, kind of creating this yeah wave through the ground and uh, breaking up uh, the pavements uh, like you'd see here it's a very very easy setup so let's try and uh, set uh, that up so we're going to start by making these pavements uh, we just open up a new blend file add a circle uh, with only six vertices fill it and uh, add a modifier a solidify modifier and let's add a bevel as well and to round off let me apply the scale a bit here and just to round off uh, those corners and to make them look smooth i'll turn on shade smooth and also turn on hard hardened uh, normals and uh, under the object data turn on auto smooth and you can see we are getting these rounded corners i'll also turn on random colors so that i can easily Yes, so that is easy for me to look at uh, these. Scale this down. Uh, another thing I noticed in my testing is that uh, the scale of your object uh, kind of affects uh, the, si the simulation uh, because larger obje objects tends to be tend to be slower when they are falling down uh, than uh, smaller objects. So uh, make sure your scale is right. But uh, since this is uh, just a tutorial to show you how things work, I won't worry too much about that so let me add an array here just create this just see now actually let me first do this let me first uh, create other uh, pattern so I'll just duplicate this like this something like that and then copy this array and use it for the also copy this value use it for this uh, da, 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 da. Let's, uh, see the C around great now you can just increase this and you have your pavement you can design a pattern you you um, you like more uh, I'm just getting going with this simpler one uh, also make sure that you leave some gap between the different blocks uh, so that uh, when you turn on the physics uh, they don't just go away and explode yeah so something like that and now we can add our ground that is going to deform or kind of push other pavements up we need to have a bit of the resolution here for this uh, let me add a loop there add a loop there Actually, let me just do this instead so like that that Then subdivide. Great. Now we can use dynamic painting to distort, to deform this uh, ground here. Uh, first of all, let's uh, give it a rigid body system. Uh, make sure it is uh, passive. And uh, let's create another object uh, that is going to act as our brush or snake or whatever you want to use here. Uh, we're going to give to animate it a bit. Uh, so let me add on, turn on some keyframes here. Scale it up just a bit. Start animating it like so. Great. Uh, now we can select this ground and uh, let me first remove the rigid body. Turn on dynamic painting. Uh, make sure it's a canvas. And uh, the surface type you can either use displacement or waves. Uh, but uh, I'm going to use waves because I want to have, if you look at this here, the original example, 
can see when we when the ground uh, starts moving there's some kind of wave behind it I think I I don't know it might not be realistic uh, but uh, I think I like it better than just displacing the ground it adds some additional movement in the in the pavements that I like uh, if you don't want that you can just use I'll, I'll just show you the difference and I think I've done quite a number of uh, dynamic painting tutorials uh, that I don't think I need to explain uh, this too much. Uh, let me cut uh, the end frame to 100 and uh, make sure this is set to dynamic painting uh, type of brush. And uh, you can see this is what we get with the wave and this is what we get with displacement. Uh, so turn on more shading for now and see I, I think we are getting a lot of this uh, displacement here so to reduce that just uh, reduce uh, the scale of influence something like that and uh, you can use a negative displacement uh, to have this go up instead of down something like that so this is what displacement does, and this is what waves does. Uh, but uh, I don't like uh, the, the movement to be too much. So if you want to reduce uh, the movement there, you just have either to touch at the time scale or uh, the speed. Let's try the speed again. I think it's supposed to be. Yeah, if you reduce the speed to 0 0.00, it will act like displacement. Uh, if you go on increasing the speed just a bit you start getting a slight movement let me first increase uh, the okay so this is we are working with waves so we don't have the negative displacement so to get a, a negative displacement meaning that uh, this just pushes uh, the ground up instead of uh, making it fall down you would have to go to uh, through the brush and I think the brush. If, forget, let me see. Let me see. You go under this. There's supposed to be a negative displacement here. I'm forgetting. The scale can't go negative. The radius can't also go negative. I think it. I use, let me see what I use. I'm forgetting what I use here in the original version. Ah, uh, if you're using waves, you won't have a negative value. It doesn't work like that. So, uh, if you want this to go up, I uh, would have to use displacement. It's the only uh, type that has a negative uh, displacement. Uh, this is a bit too high, so negative 0.5 should work better. And uh, you can dissolve this just a bit. Uh, if I go under surface here, there is an option to dissolve uh, this, and you can see kind of which is which might happen in real life as uh, this as the whatever creature you have crawling under this under the ground as it moves away, uh, the ground will try to will, will start collapsing back in its position, and uh, I maybe we just have to reduce uh, the dissolve time if you want it to be a little bit faster you can see it adds a nice effect to it so i think and uh, now to displace are these here uh first of all we need to make sure that uh, each block here is 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 a uh, is its own uh block so let's first apply the solidify modifier we don't have applied the bevel we can apply the array all the arrays and then go to edit mode and then separate by loose parts just hit p to separate by loose parts uh, what i usually like to do is uh, add uh, the different blocks into uh, their own 
our group so that they can be easy to select. So I'll call this loop group uh, blocks. And uh, now if I want to select all of the blocks, I just hit select one of them and then hit shift G select by collection. And I can see now I have them selected. Uh, so when you separate each block uh, from the rest of the block, from the rest, from the, from the block, the array, I, you're going to have their pivot point at one pivot point. So select everything, right click origin to geometry so that you reset uh, the origin to be, uh, to be added to each individual uh, block. Now we can have, make sure that everything is selected, go to object and then rigid body and turn on, how is it called? Rigid body active. Yes, active. So you see that we just fall through at the ground uh, because we need this to be a rigid body too, but a type of passive. And then they should be like that. So if you want them to deform, uh, you can turn this into a mesh. And then, so uh, one of the comments from the last uh, video I made about collapsing pavements. By the way, uh, you can watch the entire time lapse of creating this scene here, uh, including the, the materials, how I made uh, the random color variation in this, uh, because th these all these blocks are using the same material, but you can see some have a different uh, color variation. Uh, if you want to watch all that, how I set this, the materials up, you can just go watch uh, this, where is that? Don't want to show anything I shouldn't be showing. Ah, uh, yeah. You can go to my second channel, uh, which is Blender Money, and uh, you can watch that from there. Uh, how I set up everything from there. Uh, so, yeah, w one of the comments I don't remember the name, forgive me, but uh, suggested that if I turn on animated, it should kind of uh, have these elements, have the mesh, uh, the rigid body mesh respond to any deformations. So let me see, I, have, I haven't tried that out, but uh, I, I did try it, but uh, it wasn't working for me, so I'm not sure. So the way, the way I made it work, uh, and the same way I made it, is the same way I made it work in the last video, is that I duplicated these, this ground, so that the first one is the rigid body with a collision shape of mesh and uh, deforming turned on, and then, but uh, it should not have uh, dynamic, dynamic painting, dynamic painting. And then the second one would have dynamic painting. So all the distortion will be, the distortion from this will be added to this object, uh, but uh, it, does, it doesn't have a rigid body system. And uh, you would have that distort the rigid body passive object with the surface deformer modifier. So I'm applying the surface deformer modifier onto this 